hey there guys and welcome back. On this week's show, a child's toy helicopter. Well, it's Kids Day here on the show again today where I promote getting your young ones out into the shop to help make a project and introduce them to this craft that we all love of woodworking. Um, truth be told, I've been playing with different design programs in order to try to figure out how to use them and be able to offer some higher quality um, patterns here from the show. So I designed a little helicopter toy and that's what we're going to work on today. So let's head over to the bench and see what I've come up with. Well, this is the pattern that I've come up with and it's fairly simple and that's what we're after. That's what we're looking for. So we're going to start first by laminating the stock for the body. Now I've stated here that I want the body to be an inch and a half thick material. So what I have is a couple of pieces of scrap pine. It's pine because pine is very forgiving for the young ones to work with. It's easy to sand. It makes it, you know what, if you ever want to deter a child from woodworking, hand them a piece of maple or walnut and get them to sand it for an hour and a half. I promise you they will walk away from this craft very quickly. So we're going to use pine. It's three quarters of an inch thick, three and a half inches wide, five inches long, and I have two pieces. The very first thing that we're going to do is we're going to glue these and clamp them together in order to get the stock for our body. While we're waiting for the blank for the body to dry up, what we're going to do is cut all of the other pieces. Now, I tried to make this as accessible as I could by getting normal stock or thickness of woods. Inch and a half acquired by two three quarter pieces. This piece here is cut from a half inch thick piece of stock and everything else is from quarter inch thick. I'm not sure of the proportions because I haven't tested this as a practical build yet, but that's what we're doing today. So what I have is a bunch of scraps here. Now these are just from various builds and off cuts and that sort of thing. They're, for most people, they're junk, but not for me, not here today. Today, these are helicopter parts. Um, so what I'm going to do, I want this entire project to be accessible to children and I want it to be able to be done on the scroll saw to make it safe. So all the pieces are gonna be cut on the scroll saw. Now, all I'm going to do at this point, I'm gonna coat each one of these pieces with a layer of masking tape or painter's tape as it's also referred to. And then I'm going to cut these patterns for all of our pieces, all five of them, the two landing gears, the main rotor, the tail rotor, and our landing gear. And we are going to spray the backs of them with spray adhesive, let them tack up for three minutes, and then rub them down onto our stock. The light colored wood, or maple in this case, is going to be used for the landing gear bracket. But all the other uh, pieces will be cut from the walnut, that'll be the landing gear, and the two rotors, both main and tail. Okay, and now we can take these over to the scroll saw. I'm going to use a number three blade on the quarter inch material and cut out our landing gear pieces and our rotors. And then I will use a number five. I may jump to a number seven for this uh, because of the hard maple. We'll see how it's cutting, but I'll use a number five reverse tooth blade and cut out the landing gear brackets.
You now want to take the main rotor piece and the tail rotor piece and mark the center. I've left the paper on here because it makes it easier to mark that center. It's not on the pattern itself because I don't know how accurately you or your child will cut these. So that length may vary and that's okay. Mark the center and we're going to drill a 964 diameter hole. Just like that. <laughs> so normally when I show scrolling videos, I'm not a huge fan of this masking tape and then a pattern. It's just not uh, useful for me for the type of intricate scrolling I do. But for this type of project, it's perfect. And what makes it extra perfect is that it's a child that will be cutting it and removing the pattern can sometimes be a chore. But with the masking tape, the child can get a hold of the edge and you can peel back that masking tape without too much difficulty. And the best part about it is, once it peels off, there's no residue left behind here. So that was the reason for the masking tape. Um, you now want to peel all the patterns off of these pieces and give them all a good sanding. So with those five pieces sanded, we can put those aside and I've taken two small lengths of three eighths inch diameter dowel. They're three eighths of an inch long. And I have drilled in one end a one eighth diameter hole, not all the way through, but almost through. I've left about maybe a sixteenth of an inch at the bottom. And the reason for that is what we need to do. We have two of them and we're going to glue in one into each a little length of one eighth inch diameter dowel. And then you can clean up the squeeze out on it. And then we can give this a light sanding to take off some of that sharp profile at the top of the dowel. So the next thing you want to do is we're going to take our landing gear bracket and this is the way it sits. We want to measure to the center of this top little section here of our landing gear and right in the middle we're going to drill a through 1 8 diameter hole. Okay and with that hole drilled we can now glue our landing gear here onto our brackets and it will just get glued on just like this. Try to make these runners as parallel as you can to each other and our bracket will be centered on our landing gear. I'm going to do it a little better than that, but something like that. Use a little square if you have to to make sure that things line up and are square to your piece, but glue this bracket now onto our two pieces for our landing gear. Okay, and at this point we're at a standstill. So what we're going to do is we're going to put aside this completed landing gear. We're going to put aside all of our dowels that we've glued up and our rotors. And we'll just have to wait now until the glue dries on the main body of the helicopter. Well, the blank for the body is dried up and I've applied the masking tape and glued our pattern down using spray adhesive. So this is a bit of a tougher cut for a young person. So these holes here, although they can be scrolled if they want to give that a try, I would suggest drilling them. So I'm going to take them over to the drill press. We will use a Forstner bit and drill a 15 16 inch diameter hole here and a 5 8 diameter hole right here. And now we're going to take it over to the scroll saw, use a number seven reverse tooth PGT blade, and I'm going to cut the perimeter of this. It's pine. And while you may think it's a softer wood, it is much easier to cut. It actually has to be taken a little slower. The reason for that is the dust is fine and the dust is dense and it's very easy to gum up the gullets of the blade, not allowing it to clear the kerf enough to be able to cut properly. That will overheat your blade, it'll burn your piece, it'll make it so that you get a premature blade snappage. So take it slow and let's get this cut around on the perimeter of this helicopter body.
then at this point we can remove the pattern and give the whole thing a good sanding. You can see how easily that pattern came off and that's why I do the masking tape and spray adhesive when children are working on it. So give this a good sanding and uh, paying attention now to do inside the holes, no sharp edges and no sharp edges around this perimeter. All right, and with that we can put our tail rotor on. And for that, all we need to do is we need to line it up back here on the tail. It'll sit right about there. We're gonna take it all and mark that position. And then we're gonna take it over to the drill press and I'm going to drill a 1 8 diameter hole half an inch deep. And with that hole drilled, I have taken one of our 1 8 dowels with that piece of 3 8 dowel glued on the end. I've cut it so our piece of dowel is three quarters of an inch long. And we can just put it through our uh, tail rotor and into that hole and we can glue it in place. Now you want to put the glue in this hole. Don't put it on the actual pin itself because the squeeze out that's sort of squeegeed off, you, off of it as you push it in, it's going to cause you problems and glue your rotor in place. So let's get this rotor glued in and uh, we can go from there. If you're having problems getting glue into that hole, don't sweat it. You can use your center punch with a little bit of glue on the end and put it down in there and just scrape the sides with it, just like that. The other thing you want to be careful of is don't put it in all the way. You want to leave slack for your tail rotor to spin. All right, there we go. I'm happy with that. So we're going to leave it at that. All right. So now the next thing I want to do is I want to mount our landing gear. And for that, what I want is this kind of teardrop shape. This kind of faces down a little bit. It's kind of a cartoony helicopter. So we're going to place it there so that that's what it looks like, so that it's facing down. I'll just show you something like, like this. We're gonna mark that center point there and right in the middle, I'm going to drill a 1 8 hole up into our body, making sure that I don't go into these window holes. And with that hole drilled, we're just gonna do a test fit. Basically, the process is we're going to apply glue to the dowel and to the base of our landing gear here, and that dowel will go up inside just like that, and it'll help to strengthen that glue joint because there's not a lot of surface area here on this curved surface. So I'm going to get that glued up, get that pin glued into place. I'm going to cut it off and sand it flush and then we can carry on with the next step. And with that I've got the landing gear on. Now truth be told, I drilled in through the landing gear up into our landing gear brackets and put another 1 8 inch dowel and glued it in place, sanded it flush just to support this and strengthen those skis kind of thing on the landing gear. Well, the last thing that we need to do with this project now is to mount our main rotor. So for that, it's pretty simple. All we need to do is sit it upright just like this, take our main rotor, center it so that it balances here on the top of our curve and once it balances you'll be able to see its position we will mark that in the center with our awl drill a half inch deep 1 8 diameter hole and then we can mount this and i'll show you how we're going to do that well, I have our other 1 8 diameter pin with our 3 8 dowel on the top and I've cut it just like I did with this one so that our dowel, our 1 8 dowel, is 3 quarters of an inch long. So all we need to do is place that down through our rotor. I'm going to put a number 8 flat washer onto that 1 8 dowel and then we can sink it into our 1 8 diameter hole that we just drilled and that should allow our rotor to spin freely. So we can glue this in place now. Again, put the glue 
into the hole, not on the dowel. So let's get this put in place. And um, I think at that point, we could pretty much call this one a completed project. Just when gluing this in place, just make sure that you're not putting it so tight that the rotor can't spin. You want to leave a gap there to give room for that to spin on your helicopter's body. And there you have it. A child's toy helicopter. Guys, this honestly was a complete blast. I loved every bit of it. I think what made this the most satisfying for me is the fact that I was trying new design software and I ended up being able to make this myself as far as the pattern goes and then bring it to you today here on the show. What you see today as far as this finished product, um, it's the first time it's been cut. So all of the proportions and everything else, I sort of tried to picture it in my head. I had a tape measure at my desk and I would take it and I would look and say, yeah, that's about right or okay, maybe that might work, I don't know. Um, and then I would transpose that onto the computer to hopefully get a higher quality pattern to provide. And I don't know what you guys think, hopefully you like it, but I honestly love this. It is so simple in the design. And it was designed with children in mind, not just for playing with it, but oh my goodness, guys, it was designed so that the children could come into your shop, your young ones could come in and make this. This is so easy to make. If you think that inch and a half um, pine or that lamination is going to be too hard for them to cut, don't worry about it. Just Take it down to three quarters. If that's what you want to do, then do it. Make this design your own. There's absolutely no reason that you can't. You don't have to follow exactly what I've done here. Now, if you guys want the pattern for this, I am more than happy to share it with you. And as before here on the show, all you have to do is send me an email at a cut above underscore woodworking at hotmail.com and I would be more than happy to send you a copy of this PDF so that you can make your own or have your child make their own. Now, don't be confined to the dimensions that I gave you. I already mentioned that you could adjust that thickness, but you could also photocopy this pattern a little bigger. If you wanted a bigger helicopter, make a bigger helicopter. How about a smaller helicopter? How would that be? Um, how small can you make it? I don't know. Maybe have a contest. See if you and your child, who can make the smallest helicopter? What if you're not confident enough yet to get your child into the shop and you just feel that maybe they're not ready to actually be hands-on on those tools? That doesn't mean that they can't participate in this project. So here's what I would suggest to you. Cut all the pieces, sand all the pieces, have all the holes drilled, have all the dowels cut, have everything ready to go and glue nothing together. Put it all in a Ziploc bag and then bring it into that young one as a kit. It is now a helicopter building kit for that child to build with mommy or daddy or big brother or big sister, it doesn't matter. They can have the hands-on creative process happening that so many children are lacking today because they're too busy doing this. Video games, text messaging, cell phones. I mean, I bet you there isn't a kid today that hears Come home when the street lights come on. <laughs> Those of you who are a little older know what I'm talking about. <laughs> Guys, this has been an absolute load of fun. I loved it. It was enjoyable and I hope you enjoyed it too. If you haven't already, please consider liking and subscribing to the channel. Click the bell and then you won't miss the notifications of future episodes of this show. As I said, guys, if you want this pattern, drop me an email or a PM over at the channel's Facebook page, whatever you'd like. Um, I hope you've enjoyed today's content, guys. It's a lot of fun. I hope that you're going to try this for yourself and get your little ones in the shop with you. And more importantly, 
I hope you're going to join me again next week when I bring you yet another woodworking video.